Do you like the Wild West? A good story? Interesting characters and nice gunplay? Which games come into mind? I bet most of you would say Red Dead Redemption or the successor Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, what about Gunman Chronicles? Nein, the science fiction. Oh yeah, alright, continue. As I was saying, most of you would probably say Red Dead Redemption 1 or 2. But what if I say that one of the best western video games was not made by Rockstar, but come from Poland, to be precise, Techland. Yes, a Polish company that is not CG Projekt made some of the best western video games. Most of you know Techland from the Dead Island or Dying Light games, but before that, they were well known for video games set in the Wild West. They've made four of them. Call of Hordes, Call of Hordes Bound and Blood, which is a prequel to the first game, the absolutely awful Call of Hordes Cartel, which takes place in modern times, and the heavily stylized Call of Hordes Gunslinger. When Escalation talked about the interrogation sequence from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, except for that one time during the psychosis scene, where you suddenly encounter, well, I guess zombies. That was pretty surprising, and the entire scene was built into a bit of a humorous phase of the campaign. That was actually nice. I remember this scene and the awesome but widely unknown game. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. And five seconds later I was reinstalling the game on Steam and played through it again. I can't understand that barely anyone knows this awesome game, but let's go to the beginning. Call of Hordes Gunslinger takes place in 1910 in the US of A. I know, not the high time of the Wild West as we know it, but stick with me here. You play the old and legendary bounty hunter Silas Grievous, who misses the old times. The Wild West isn't wild anymore, civilization and modern technology have tamed the former rough plains. He enters a saloon to take a little drink and a fan by Swag recognizes him offering to pay for the drink if he tells some of his stories. The young boy knows him from Dime Novel, something that surprises the old bounty hunter. Two skeptics and a nice bar lady joins him to listen to the stories he's about to tell. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir. It would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true. Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. Sadly, this is only shown in static comic pennants, which would usually bother me. But not in this case, because the game itself is quite stylized and the faces of the listeners don't matter. The voice acting is great. You can feel the excitement of the young boy to meet his hero, the skepticism from the two others, we think the old man is just pretending to be the bounty hunter to get some free drinks. The lady is nice and grievous is old and clearly misses the good times. So the entire story is told to us by the old guy? Yep, he narrates the whole thing. I see, carry on. Gameplay. Before I address the most important part of the game, I want to talk about the gunplay. Call of Waters is more or less a standard arcade shooter and takes place in mostly small levels which open up from time to time. But nothing that is worth mentioning, even Call of Duty has bigger levels. Do not expect the big open worlds of a Rockstar game. The AI you face isn't really good or challenging on normal or lower difficulties. They get only dangerous if there are too many of them or you have no cover. However, they are able to take advantage of the cover and comes in different classes. The normal shooter, some with a shield, sniper and yes even some boss enemies. Mostly you run from cover to cover, shooting your revolver, rifle or shotgun. You don't have much weapon variety. You can have up to two revolvers, a rifle or a shotgun. But you can carry only two of the guns at the same time. So you have to choose your combination. The revolvers are the all around good for close and medium range combat. The rifle is best suited for medium to long ranges and the shotgun, well, for close combat. 
From time to time you can find different revolvers or shotguns, but it doesn't matter in the single player. At first I didn't even notice that there are different guns. The difference is mostly how quickly you can reload, a bit of damage difference, the spread, but nothing that alters the gameplay noticeable. While you don't have a huge selection of guns, it hasn't bothered me one bit. Next to guns you have access to TNT, which works like a grenade. The gameplay is improved by a simple and nice skill tree, which focuses mostly on the guns. Next to the standard skills like more ammo, better damage or crit, you find some special skills which makes it easier to find secrets. A detail that I like, that if you select the skill for faster reload, you get a new reload animation. I love to stand with two revolvers and mow down the enemies, and with a rifle I love pick off opponents one by one. While I enjoy shotguns in the most games, I don't like them in this game because you have only two shells and a short range. To spice up the gameplay, Technic put two nice mechanics into the game. The concentration mode and sense of death. The first one slows down time and highlights enemies, making it easier to kill your enemies even if they come in overwhelming numbers. The second one saves you from a deadly shot. The time slows down again and you have to evade the shot, a bit like Wild West Matrix. The sense of death fills up over time. Concentration mode on the other hand only fills up if you kill enemies and fills up quicker the higher your points and kill combo is. Yes, this game has a point system like some Asian games. Every kill rewards you with points. You get bonus points for headshots, trick shots, kills through cover and so on. The quicker the kill, the more points you get, with which the concentration meter and the level bars fills quicker. It sounds strange if you hear that you see big white numbers while shooting enemy after enemy with two revolvers in a western city. In a normal western game like Call of Wars or Red Dead Redemption it would be out of place, but here it feels ok, even right. All thanks to the style which I will cover in the graphics section. There are several other little features like shooting TNT mid-air to protect you from enemy explosive or to blow up your own TNT above heads from your enemies like an airburst grenade. And on some occasion you kill enemies while jumping out of something. Call of Duty has a modern health system like Call of Duty in many other games, which means if you take cover you regenerate, but instead of a bloody screen it looks like someone shoot through the pages of an old book or a painting canvas. Very in line with the telltale theme. Hidden in the compact levels you will find many secrets. Most of them are collectibles that tell you stories about real gunslinger from the wild west like Billy the Kid, the Innocents and so on. A nice detail. One of the highlights and crucial for every western game are showdowns. At the end of every chapter you have a showdown or standoff with the antagonist. They are very intense, progressively getting harder and harder. At first you only have to keep your hands close to the revolver. Then you have to keep your enemies in your sight. Don't pull out too late or too quickly, evade enemy fire and more. You can play honorable, shoot only if the enemy is pulling their revolvers or play dirty and kill them quick. Playing honorable is harder, your timing has to be precise. The game evaluates if you miss, showing you where you have been too slow. This is a decent challenge of your personal skill. Every time I've lost a shutdown, it was my fault. Now let's address the graphics. The game is 10 years old by now and you can see it. But it really is not an eyesore, on contrary actually. The game runs on the Chrome Engine 5, which is Teclan's own engine, and while some effects and polygon of several models is outdated, the overall level geometry presents itself within a very detailed fashion. Even the way it's being rendered holds up rather nicely and thanks to its artistic style, the game has aged quite well overall. The game reaches a high point when it's come to the presentation of enemies. Every boss enemy gets an intro, like in a good comic. The story sequence, while static, are beautifully drawn. Everything looks gritty, feels dirty, used, Oh, The game has heavily overdramatic blood effects, which enhance the feeling of reading an old comic. Or they emphasize the fact that an old man tells you some tales of his life, which may be a bit embellished. Exactly. <laughs> so tell me about the story already, I'm curious. The story is the best part of this game and levitates the game to a whole new level. While many games have a cool story, nice protagonist, this game has charm. The main protagonist, the bounty hunter, is telling the story while you are playing, commenting everything that is happening on the screen, commenting on the player's action and sometimes even changing the story. In one chapter he tells you how he is chasing someone in a mine and you enter a mine shaft filled with explosives. In the end he admits that this path would be insane and luckily he didn't choose it, 
so you find yourself at the beginning of the level again and you choose the other path. Then he tells the same story, but slightly different. Not just moronic, but clearly insane. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder, a way into the mine from the opposite side. While you are blasting bullet after bullet into enemies killing dozens of cowboys, the old man provides narration to what is happening, even sometimes making fun about the genre. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. But that's not all. The fanboy and the skeptics interfere with the story, share their own thought and comment on the story. And thanks to the amazing voice actors, it feels as if you are directing the story. You are telling the story with the click of your left mouse button. Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. This is such a perfect and rare combination that I can't say how much I love it. It is hard to show you gameplay because the old man Silas Grievous is talking all the time. I played through this game three times by now and with every playthrough I find new charming details, new little jokes, some hints and I just love how he tells a simple but well written story. And there is where many other games fail. Sure, this game doesn't come with the death or as with many characters as Red Dead Redemption. But Call of Duty's gunslinger story and the way it's presented is just amazing and unique. I find myself watching my own gameplay and just listening to what Grievous is saying. I don't want to tell you too much about the story itself because it is the main selling point and you have to experience it yourself. Sure, the plot is just a revenge plot, but the way it's presented makes it just wonderful. And yes, revenge plots may be simple, but they usually make for entertaining cinema. To top it off, there's music. The music was composed by Pavel Blaschak and it's just freaking amazing. Holy fucking scheiße. I'm not a big fan of western music, except the very popular ones like Ecstasy of Gold from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. But the music from Call of Duty's Gunsling is so damn good. They combine near perfect western style with modern rock and epic orchestra. It is a damn fucking shame that this awesome soundtrack isn't available for purchase. Techland. Give me the soundtrack, I want to give you money. In conclusion, without the story, this game would be just a mediocre arcade shooter, with barely enough depth to keep me entertained for more than two or three hours. But with the amazing story, the great voice acting and the incredible soundtrack, the game is a freaking blast to play. It is a game I always come back to after a year or two and play through it once more. To simply enjoy it like a good Western movie. The game runs perfectly well on modern systems, with barely any bugs. This game is available for around 13 bucks on the Steam store and worth every penny. If you see it on sale, I would highly suggest grabbing it if you are a fan of western and well presented stories. On the Nintendo Switch store it costs about 20 bucks. This is a bit too much in my eyes, it is almost the original price when it first came out. While I love the game, the story and the soundtrack, there are games with much more content at this price range. I have to give you one last warning. While the menu is available in many languages, the voice lines on the other hand are always in English. But I suppose you do speak English if you're watching this video. And even have a high tolerance for German accents. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> very funny. I want to thank you for watching this video and thank you for all the patrons who got to see this video well in advance. Our patron supporters are Sir K, Alboni Knight, Charles Surrett, Inter, Copfighter, Tainzer, Strange Module, Rusliva, Rainbow Flash, Tom, Breastress, Plasma, Harrison Steffen, Cookie, Wrapped in Glass, That Gladys, and Lone Wolf Deconus. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me.